Welcome everybody back to uh, Siegel Talks here at the Martin E. Siegel Theater Center, the Graduate Center, CUNY. My name is Frank Henschker and I'm the director of the Siegel Center. We are um, in Manhattan, in New York City, You're the only institution as far as we know in the Americas and Europe producing every day a new programs related to coronavirus theater performance. And our idea, instead of showing live work at the Siegel Center for three, four years, we actually had the only film festival of uh, screen work by theater artists. Uh, and, and But we decided and thought it is important now to listen, to radically listen, to uh, have conversations and to uh, not uh, stream uh, already recorded work. And, uh, and we have done so for 13 weeks now, still in March we began and we have uh, talked to now uh, almost 100 artists and heard globally from uh, around the world um, how the situation is, how the virus uh, is affecting lives, this thinking, the working, the, also the future of theater and performance. We follow Brecht's idea who said, new times need new forms of theater and we are investigating how are they looking like? Do we know that it's all raw? There are moments of um, experiencing so radically different for, for everyone. And we are stunned to hear from, uh, from Indonesia or Egypt, uh, to hear from Taiwan or Korea, to hear from uh, Germany or Belgium, and, uh, and then from the US or Brazil, uh, devastating accounts from Chile and uh, and so many, many, many more things. We hear from masters of theaters, we hear from emerging artists, but they're all significant voices and we need to hear from them. They are on the right side of history artists. They have been on the right side on the complex struggle for freedom and for liberties. And the social progress always went hand in hand with the arts and especially the performance arts. So people do care, people think in social political contexts in systems and they have been a contributor to change. We are in a complex time, a time of change. Um, Spider Women, the Native American theater company said we are perhaps in a new creational myth. Uh, we do not know how the outcome is, something very dangerous is out there. Or like in the old fairy tales, we have the Mad King, there's a plague in the country and it's up to us to mobilize, to go out on adventure, to save, to put our lives at risk perhaps for to believe at what we do. Uh, Tanya Bruguera from Cuba said she's interested in Brecht's Galileo project because he had to make up his mind. Do I say what I believe? Do I say what I stand for my work? Or do I don't say anything and renounce my views? So I get my dinner and my chicken. And so um, there are big, big questions we have uh, here. Um, before we come to our great guest and I welcome uh, Liva Yatsi from uh, Syria, who is a, a, a refugee, who is uh, um, an, um, um, working in Berlin um, to continue her work in theater, poetry and film and television. Um, let's go for a moment back to the US here. We had a terrible day yesterday, 40,000 uh, new infections were reported. And as we all know, this doesn't really cover all the numbers. It's the highest day ever since we started this series and we are very, uh, very concerned. Texas closed its bars again, uh, unprecedented because they like uh, everybody else uh, in, in the countries that support our president so strongly, try to ignore it, uh, diminish it. Like Arizona and Florida experiencing numbers unheard of. And uh, there are 2.5 million infections in the US. The next one is Brazil with 1.2 and then 600,000 uh, uh, Russia and um, young Americans, New York Times uh, wrote about it today, young Americans between 20 and 44 actually make up half of the cases. They might not be as sick as other people, older or people with preconditions, but about 50% of all the cases are young people. And yes, also some of them get the virus and actually get it back. They get over it and it comes back in a second wave. The indication that it might even induce Diabetes, uh, this hasn't been uh, known before, so it's quite a, a complex time um, we do live in here. And um, Saudi Arabia has, you know, as we said earlier, has uh, ended the Haji. Basically, only a thousand people will be allowed to come. Normally, 2.5 million travel to do the holy pilgrimage. Um, uh, mosques are closed for first time in a thousand years. 
and um, and uh, we do not know where this all is going. Uh, Britain might close all its beaches. It was opened yesterday. Millions went out, did not respect any guidelines, safety. They have such high numbers of cases and they might close everything down. Um, interestingly enough, Israel and the Arab Emirates who don't have any diplomatic ties agreed for the first time to collaborate, to do scientific research um, on on the virus, so um, there are interesting things. Liverpool won yesterday, finally, the league in England. They went out, people also to celebrate and not really uh, respecting um, the rules, not wearing masks, chanting, singing, and all that, what we really want to do, but it is most probably very foolish to do, though it's a most dangerous time, perhaps more dangerous than in the very beginning, and we have to uh, be uh, truly uh, on our, our lookout, um, and we have to stay safe. Another disturbing thing, uh, the police in Houston, Arizona, uh, was more or less hiding another murder by the police. A 27-year-old uh, Latino man, who was named Carlos Ingram Lopez, died in police custody on the lawn in the house of his grandmother. He did say on the video, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. He was in, uh, in, a, in that chokehold and uh, didn't survive. I think he had uh, um, also mental health problems, but it was misdiagnosed and there was no reason to kill another man. Strangely enough, uh, the outcry is not as big as it should be. And uh, we are again shocked by this and uh, the awareness that we have now hopefully will um, bring real change, change we need. Trump, as we know, doesn't wear a mask uh, in his big uh, rally as Tulsa. Um, his secret service actually now dozens of them have to be in quarantine because they had and got the coronavirus. So many people in the building where he called them was to come without masks, got infected. It's a president full of disregard for human life. Um, so many people were dying because of his politics. And um, he suggested injecting us you know, with disinfectant. He fled, fled in a bunker when there was some unrest in front of the White House and he cleared uh, with tear gas friendly and peaceful protest to hold up a Bible in front of a church for a photo op with the military. And he's asking the military to basically uh, um, shoot on their own people, on American people. He is supposed to protect us. The military is here to protect us and not to use uh, military tactics as the police did flying helicopters over demonstrators. It's unacceptable, it's unimaginable. America should be an exception. It's not, we hear worldwide of the injustices and but we are in, watching in horror uh, what is happening in here and we all hope it uh, will change police is refusing in many places to wear masks also and nobody understands how this is possible and there should be a clear order it's not so it's a moment of disarray uh, the distrust deep distrust in government deep distrust in workplaces a lockdown people can go out and temperatures are rising so it's a perfect storm and we hope it will not be a violent summer, the summer of 2020. Theater has been on the side of peaceful protest, of radical protest, but peaceful to look at the world, to look at stories from each side, try to understand the complexity of what theater is about. Everybody who says it's like this and not like that, it's black or white is lying to us. That's what Trump and others do. Theater shows how much actually is uh, in, um, in direct uh, opposition uh, to each other. There are complex answers, there are contradictions, and we have to be able to live in contradictions, but find solutions, find forms that work. And theater always has been uh, on the forefront of finding new forms, rejecting old ones, and reinvigorating society with that, that's showing what is possible. So I'm very concerned today, and I apologize for going on a little bit longer, but also the fact that uh, Americans most probably will not be allowed to fly to Europe. Europe is gonna open July 1st. Americans, as it looks like, none, no American will be able without a special permission to fly and visit Europe. And so US is joining countries like Brazil or like Russia. And it's a death, disastrous uh, politics of Trump that provoked that he famously closed overnight without consulting anyone, the EU borders for um, America when there were a thousand cases in America but there was no testing, there was no awareness at the time. So it's uh, shocking what we, what we go through. Um, but life itself is uh, so complex, so hard. And now with us, we have uh, uh, Levan. Again, I apologize for my long introduction, but um, 
She's from Syria, a, a country where a corona uh, virus might look, uh, if you're from there, like a little holiday. We had Natasha, <laughs> Natalia Worosbiniak from, uh, from Ukraine, who said for us, the coronavirus is like Christmas. We have, uh, you know, there's no war. The border was Russia and, uh, and we are at home. It's peaceful and uh, uh, she's afraid of what might happen. She's very apocalyptic thinking. So Liva, tell us, uh, how is it for you? You're in Berlin and what time is it? Where are you? And uh, what's on your mind? It's um, six something afternoon. It's a hot Berliner day. Um, it's really strange to have such hot days <laughs> in summer, especially in summer. And um, yeah, I'm here since 2016. I arrived here to work on a project. And then it seemed that I, in a way, had no other option to leave, go back to the Middle East due to my, um, the nature of my work, first of all, and then the nature of the dictatorship that uh, rules the country. So there was, um, I'm, yeah, so I decided to stay here to, um, to work more on the project and on other projects. And how is the situation with Corona? It's um, like other countries, Germany is also rising higher in the percentage of, um, I mean, I don't know if I should call it second wave, but the, 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 the institution here, they started calling it a second wave. So um, in a way, it's, um, it could be a very short summer <laughs> in, in terms of like really going out and yeah, but um, to go to the next layer of your question about what is on my mind and how do I spend the time during Corona, just like so many of other maybe guests, it, it was a time for me to uh, to watch and observe. I wanted to be part of this kind of universal. Um, uh, it's not a. Um, it's not a break. Actually, it's like kind of. I. I accepted. I took in the, um, the the situation. I didn't want to fight against it or to immediately produce about it. It was also really um, impossible for me. So I. Um, I took it as a time to reinform myself. And to recharge. Um, that was, that's, that's on different layers, whether politically to read more about um, maybe historically how other plagues really, I mean, happened in, in history, how to have, how to look at this period as part of a historical um, kind of tide and to know more about the policies that could really contribute, could have contributed to this thing that we are in because I was surrounded by um, some kind of really obnoxious um, um, ideas concerning how China eat uh, bats and all these things. So it, for me, it was really very superficial to really get in and accept all this feedback and uh, to know more about uh, the distribution of wealth in the, in the world and to understand more and to recharge more in that terms not only as an artist, but as a human being, because, um, yeah, because we're all part of this. And once again, uh, and this is really coming from a Syrian background, once again, I'm pretty sure now there's another layer to tell us all that no one is safe alone. So this thing that we lived through in Syria and like, um, yeah, there is a spot somewhere, there's always a spot somewhere in the world where, where a war is taking place, where like weapons are sold, where refugees come from, where disasters happen. But we are safe here, we close our doors, we're safe in, I don't know, Europe, in Australia, in New Zealand, in, in Ethiopia, I don't know. But I mean, there is always that kind of distance that something is happening there and it always happened there. And as long as we're safe, as long as we're in our comfort zone, it's all right. But lately, the last, um, maybe 10, 15 years, I would say that there's um, this slogan is, is being uh, defied and shaken. And the more time passes, the more, I guess we're sure that if there is a war somewhere in the world, if there is a crisis somewhere in the world, we're all concerned. And, and that's how really coronavirus really um, functioned in a way. So it's not there in China, it's not there in Syria, it's everywhere. And you're not um, immune if you are rich, <laughs> and, and, and if you're not you're not immune if you're um, in a first world country. 
though it really helps, but you're not immune. So I mean, all these ideas about um, to be really aware about how, what are the factors, how things interact, um, about class issues in, in, the, in times of crisis. I mean, there is this idea that uh, Corona unified every person, like artists, I don't know, um, people wherever they are rich and, and poor, actually not. I mean, you, to, to be confined in like two meters apartment is not like to be confined in your palace and like to be confined with access to healthcare is not like to be confined in a, in a country like Syria or Sudan or Yemen at the moment. So all of these things really, um, in a way, um, shaped the time, um, the first time of um, shock about Corona. Um, but at the same time, there is a kind of recharge and trying to understand um, the place where I'm standing in, what kind of um, content. I mean, looking about content, about ideas like Darwinism, because I was like thinking if dealing with Corona is a, is a kind of uh, another um, um, survival of the fittest. I mean, it's, um, is this another layer of um, how certain ideas, certain concept extinct and other one come to life again? And to deal with such a dilemma, whether on a, um, on a structural level, on a personal level, is this another kind of Darwinism? And um, to see, because that means there is a kind of a new thing happening, something new coming out of it. So I was very curious to maybe we're not, the, I mean, I'm not the one who would be surviving. It's not about like I survived, but it's the idea of what is the shape that would come out of it as a, as a result of the survival of the fittest in such kind of um, struggle. And um, so I was fascinated to see how each country or each community or each um, group, let's say, dealt with this. And to, there was like ideas that Malaysia is doing well, Sweden is doing well, I don't know who's doing well. Uh, sarcastically, maybe some poor countries uh, were better in, in acting or reacting to such a thing. So it was for me very um, interesting and very good to, to look at that and to understand, I mean, to, to communicate in a way with other people, how they are dealing with it. And just to let, take a distance from my own, um, my own struggle with like work and Syria and you know, all of this to have it all together in one pot with this international moment. So yeah, I mean, um, that was very um, intense for me. It was not a kind of a break in, in that way. That's why I told you it's not a break. Actually, it was more of an intense time. Um, I would not say it's a forced intense time because um, in a way it, I could have just went working on my project, but um, I really took, took this uh, decision to be part of it, to, um, to watch it, observe it, um, live it and to have some moments when I'm um, thinking word or um, just sitting there um, knowing not, nothing what to do and worrying about people around me. So it's really on that level. And um, trying to examine ideas like all these also conspiracy narratives that we were uh, surrounded with. It was for me very, um, as someone who's working with narratives and stories and it was for me very um, important to see how people also react in these narratives who would say that this is a kind of manipulation, there is nothing over there, <laughs> there's no virus, it's just like a flu and they're using it to control. All these narratives were very interesting for me to see how people in, um, use different mechanisms to defend this moment, this absurd moment. So yeah. That's, um, that was um, a full job of nothing. <laughs> Doing nothing like a full job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what about, what about you? <laughs> well, you know, as you, as you know, for the series, you know, we are, we are, we are trying to make sense out of by, by listening. Yeah. Where, where are you when it happened? Do you remember when, when it started? Yeah, I was in Syria. I was shooting, uh, working on my next documentary. I was shooting there. 
and then um, uh, I started hearing the news about Corona, and then I started to think, no, it, um, maybe it's just like a, like a uh, something like a phase, or it happened quickly and it goes. And then when it started to really materialize on the international scene, I uh, was um, directed to the choice that I should go back to Berlin. Uh, because I cannot stay for a long time in Syria because of security reasons, so I should really find a way and interrupt and stop everything and go back to Berlin. And just the way back to Berlin is really an absurd uh, moment now when I say I have to go back to Berlin because I'm Syrian and I, I should stay in Syria. Um, that's where, I mean, the word back home means for me, so, but I mean, politically and historically at the moment, it's not home, I should really leave. So I went back to Berlin and I had to stop uh, working on a documentary, which is dealing with the idea of homecoming. So um, it was also an, a question for me about home. It's, um, it was a moment when like, I was in a way facing again the, the, the theme that I'm really um, um, interested in working in lately about the idea of home and identity and how they manifest and grow and develop or like uh, deteriorate in times of crisis so yeah i stopped and i went back to berlin and i um i was i, I had the time to think about um all the projects all the content that i was working on in terms of relevance because it was a kind of um an, a u-turn i mean there is a, a moment of interruption and everything you're working on seemed for a moment irrelevant to the moment that you're living in. So all the narratives or the stories or the projects, let's say, um, yeah, you reminded me of Syria. Sometimes the electricity just went off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so I had to, I had to deal with questions about content and what is relevant in this moment, I mean, is what we were, um, are these ideas and topics that we were talking about before relevant? And uh, would they say relevant? Is it a moment where um, it's a kind of interruption and the system will be able to recover again or the system will change? I was a bit uh, pessimistic because I knew that the, um, the system is stronger and um, it will find ways to leak again from the new the new demands, it will leak again to reform like a, like a jelly thing again. Um, but sooner or later, the, the deconstruction of it started to show in a way. So yeah, there huge questions about uh, content started to raise in, in front of my eyes about um, Syria about war, about new forms of war and new forms of, I mean, the idea of new form actually, and like what will come out. Um, I do believe that where we're going, we're, we were going there anyway before Corona. But mm -hmm. the, the thing that really maybe uh, surprised us is um, that it it is faster now. So we were, we were in, in a way sensing that we're moving somewhere, but Corona came and just took the break out and like, we, we're going there like faster than we expected and faster than we we're prepared to. So um, yeah, new forms would, and actually it started yeah, in, in a way, even though they were like ideas and they were thinking um, like think tanks and um, an appetite for something new and, um, we're just now faced with the fact that we we don't have so many years to think about it. It's just like there, it's it's over there, and um, and the online um, issue is like there. It created now questions about the meaning of outside and what is safe and what is um, how to access art and what is the intention. I mean about art and. Um, I mean, th these are, I mean, what is the reception theory now? And so all these things are now on the table quicker than we were thinking that they would happen. So who's your audience and who you're talking to and what is um, your tools? They are very, very much in like in, in big question marks. And do you really um, own the tools of the coming period? 
um, we might think that we do, but maybe we should like take a moment and think that we don't, or we should learn the tools of the common period or like to maybe not accept it, accept it, I don't know, it's, um, yeah. As Chekhov says, it's time for new forms as well. Mm -hmm. And the seagull, yeah. So I, I remember that uh, monologue when I'm mean, talking about new forms coming, and it's um, it was not said it was not said in the play in a in a peaceful way. I mean, it was kind of um, strong moment. I mean, uh, so it is. Although the, um, I, as I told you, I feel the system is stronger, and it will try to to bring everything in a way to the pace where it controls the 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 tools again blah 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 but i think there is now there is the pandora box and there's something out mm -hmm. yeah tell us more about uh, the going to syria to make the film how, what did you see in syria how are people doing i, I can only imagine uh, how it is in the civil war and um, and then the the fear of syria i'm sure you're in contact with family and artists What's, what's going on there? Hmm. What's going on there? I mean, the, the, I mean, the, the surface, the regime is uh, taking control of the, the thing again, but there is at the moment um, an avalanche, uh, an economic avalanche. <laughs> um, there is a, a very, very big economic problem and that, was, that is the, the universal recipe actually afterwards is that there is like this economic fall down and meltdown and like everything is the dollar, um, I mean the, 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 the currency compared to dollar is like falling down drastically and people are, re I don't really know, I don't understand uh, how people really survive. I mean, um, people started to get salaries like less than $2 of, so the, I mean, it's really absurd what's going on there. And it is always astonishing how um, something really emerge and it makes things work. How people, how people really there manage to, to eat, to work, to, I mean, to carry on in a, in a daily life. It's really surprising because I mean, the, the economic situation is so bad. Corona came like, uh, we say like, um, like gold on a plate for uh, for, for dict dictatorship because then you can um, have a lockdown, you can start um, demanding things from people that in like in your dream you couldn't have dreamt of better um, of better conditions. I mean, you can now sue people for not having masks. You can just like lock down all the uh, um, community centers, theaters, cinemas. I mean, what else such a dictatorship would like to have? I mean. You, to ask people to stay home starting from, I don't know what time, it's, it's six now, um, now they opened actually, but I mean, before it was six p.m. and in weekends, you're not allowed to go starting from uh, noon time and there's no electricity enough, there's no um, access to good internet. So, I mean, what else such a dictatorship would like to, I mean, but at the same time, it is important for the safety of people because there the infrastructure is destroyed during the war. So it, it should be in a way um, very uh, tactful in relation to Corona, but still this is really very suspicious. And it is, as it said, they really benefit from making people afraid. And um, who knows about the numbers over there? I don't, they really, every day they give us an update of how many, new cases and how many deaths and how many um, I mean healed people but it's really ridiculous because who believes uh, I mean those numbers I mean in Syria now maybe the total number is 160 something like the whole total number mm. which is um, could be but still very strange very yeah. very very strange. 160 <laughs> is like one one nursing home in the I mean, in New Jersey really you know so it's like a big <laughs> lie and uh, not yeah, confronting yeah. realities. It's, um, I mean, the same thing happened. I mean, it's ridiculous when you listen to the, me to the media. It's really funny because um, uh, they say that we're doing that for the safety of the people, all these things, you know? So it's, um, 
um, we care about the lives of people, but we know that half a million people died and like half a million still in prisons, half a million disappeared. I'm talking about safety and like wearing masks and all these um, uh, advertisement in the, in, the, in the TV to ask people to wear masks. It was really ridiculous when people really lost their noses, for example. So it's, it's and, and all these um, advertisement worldwide for like stay home. I mean, for a Syrian, it's, I, I would have said, I wish, to stay, I wish to stay home. I cannot stay home. I have to stay somewhere else. For lots of Syrians, the word home is, um, I mean, complicated. And this campaign of stay at home um, is just another reminder of injustice. <laughs> so just, mm -hmm. I wish I, could, I can stay home because I cannot stay home. And um, yeah, so it's um, in terms of um, artistic life at the moment, it's, um, it's close to nothing because of the confinement. Before, um, it was uh, divided into two layers. The, um, the institution level that has to do with the relation with the regime, getting funds from the regime, working in an international uh, theater organization or international uh, cinema organization. This was more of a, um, a spokes mouth of the government of, um, of different, um, I mean, of certain narratives. And there were the, the, independent, the independent people who were trying hardly to survive in, in such circumstances in war and in scarcity of funds. And every fund you get from outside is doomed to be um, for a Western agenda. And you have to maybe jail, to be jailed for that. It's not easy to get money from outside with a with the financial economic boycott, you cannot really get money inside Syria. So the scene for the independent artists, it's very, very complicated and difficult to get money inside. They have to, in a way, smuggle money in to produce really poor theater, but still um, some of them try to find ways and it's always good in, in war because the bribery <laughs> flourish and there's always some way that you can really um, get um, resources, but still, it's really very complicated how you want how you're gonna say a narrative um, that is different and not praising the the regime in a way, but still do it inside Syria. And this is really heroic because then it, you are you are um, in the face of a big killing machine. So um, it is not easy, and some people are trying, whether by making like theater labs. Um, or um, seminars or workshops or some productions, uh, they are really, you can count them on your hand. Um, how to um, twist some um, famous texts into, um, I mean, to say something that you want to say, but you put it on the mouse of Strindberg or whatever. So it's, um, it's not easy for artists, and, and of course they are not um, they are not protected in, in a way when everything stops and they really work by the day or by project. There's no way they can get money. There's no way in the, way, in the world where they can get money, and um, it's yeah, it's it's very hard. I mean, even taxi drivers. I, I'm not really saying that only artists are, are fighting in this battle. A lot of people who are not getting salary, which also increases in countries like Syria, when the idea of institution is questionable and um, destroyed in a way. So yeah, and um, it's very hard now for artists. I I know friends that they really, 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 I mean, suffer financially. They had to go back to their families to live in big numbers in one house. Uh, the social contract in Syria is also destroyed in the war, so um, that is another problem. But still, there is a way of um, collaboration, I mean, between people. It's more of a Mediterranean attitude towards um, each other, so there is um, still concern for your neighbor if he's eating well or not, and it's just like, there is still this, maybe the word Mediterranean is too general, but that's what, how we use it in Arabic, but um, there is a way where people really help each other, but it's not enough. It's not enough at all. It's not like in Germany, because, for example, in Germany, they decided to help uh, artists for the first, um, in, 
the, in the first wave. I don't know what happened in the second wave. Yeah. So that's about, I mean, the situation in Syria and um, it's not better in Lebanon. I mean, there was a kind of um, interaction between Syria and Lebanon in the artistic scene. And so it's not better at all in Lebanon at the moment. So it's the whole thing is really melting down. And, and yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So, um, yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's disastrous. It's disastrous here. And how disastrous must it be by a country torn by civil war and, and Syrian refugee camps where people say, yes, we you say we should wash our hands. We don't have soap. No, know? no. And you should, um, all these things about masks and um, yeah, uh, disinfections and all this, uh, they really look like different, I mean, just like um, living, living in Mars. I mean, it's, it's, it cannot be applied. I mean, no way it can be applied. And um, I don't know how they are surviving in terms of, um, of medical uh, issues. I mean, uh, I did a project about um, birth, about giving birth, um, a play about that. And um, I mean, it was, there was no corona, <laughs> there was nothing in that, I mean, in that scale. And the, the information you can get from midwives, from healthcare uh, personnel over there is disastrous. So what about Corona? It's really above imagination. I mean, with the kids, with mingling, with living, with the conditions of living, I guess Corona really is very, um, uh, just kind of um, um, binocular, like you see bigger. Um, the problems that you, that you thought they are over there. I mean, if, um, if someone if someone got infected somewhere and he visits you, so you're infected. So it's it's not about like they can really get sick over there and I'm safe. It, really, I more and more I'm really um, um, certain about this idea how to be involved in it, like all together as artists in each other problems. It's not about Syrian problem, American problem. Now we're lots of American artists are migrating to Berlin as well. So it's. In a way, it's um, it's important to see um, how we all in, in this. It's not about only mm -hmm. Syria. Yeah, no, it's incredible, and I I wonder how you, as a person, hold it all together. I know you're a poet. You had a reading at the Poets House in Manhattan, in New York. You had your play at the Royal Court in London, the play Goat, uh, which dealt with the idea that uh, if uh, your son dies fighting <clears throat> for the government in the war, they get a, you get a goat. What does that mean? And how implicit is everybody? I mean, a, we also did the reading. It's a great play. It's also done in Germany, many places. You're also a successful writer of soap operas. As far as I know, you wrote over 100 or 150 episodes. And many people said the Syrian ones were the very best uh, to make money. And, uh, and you documentary filmmaker going back to find out what home means, and then you have to go back to home, but it's not your home, and your home is in, in complete destruction. So what, what, so Corona forced you to think about the idea of home or artistic home. What, what did you find? What, what, what makes sense at the moment? What thoughts do you have? Um, it's, um... I was mostly thinking about injustice in general. And um, that is um, actually, again, this is the cycle where that's why I feel that I'm involved in arts because that's the way that my only way to talk about injustice and to deal with that, with questions of injustice. So um, home is, um, I mean, home slash let's say the word choice for me, I. I mean, with all these uh, campaigns before about uh, deporting people or not allowing people in, and at the same time selling weapons to that area where you don't want to get refugees from. I mean, it's really like, uh, like a dump over there, like a garbage bin, like a, a universal garbage bin where you can throw your jihadis, you can throw your fanatic people, you can throw you the weapons, the um, expired food, expired medicine. But I mean, that's the, I mean, now Syria is the universal <laughs> thing. I mean, we know that they open borders for like fanatic people to go from France, from Germany, from UK, from Turkey, from all over, from Tunisia. But you're not allowed as a person to find refuge in these countries. So, and then when um, 
I was like thinking about this um, dichotomy because then if um, if a French uh, person dies in uh, or like uh, in Daesh in the north of Syria and he has family and then okay or he doesn't die and then deporting him back home they don't want them I mean the French government is now or like the German the British they are having all these discussions about we don't want those people to come to come back we want to sue them on other land there so the, the idea of home for me is like really very complicated in this um, in, in this research because this is what i'm trying to do in this documentary about the idea of home is maybe this um this person is from let's say algerian origins as they try to propagate that it's always with arabic islamic origin so they go there to create the islamic i don't know what the caliphate over there and to create home and then they failed, they, they, the French don't want to take them back. They don't want to take Syrians who are like um, um, sent out from that area in the north of Syria. They, they had to flee. So, I mean, what is home? What is, um, what is home? I mean, it's, um, um, for Syrian, it's, it, it's very complicated because now it's full of foreign people that they are not allowed to travel and they are also not welcomed anywhere in the, in the universe. But still, people are selling weapons to, to, to your country and they advocate fighting. And if you go and ask Syrians outside, I mean, after 10 years of, uh, of refuge life and, and, and in miserable conditions, if you ask them, do you want to go back home now? It's maybe possible. And the, and the answers you get really strange. You know, it's um, you get answers of yes and no for really very strange reasons. And, the, the painful thing for me is that when you ask people inside Syria, do you want those who travel to come back? There is, um, there is a, a moment of silence that, uh, that says no. Um, so in a way, the nation really divided between those who are inside and those who are outside. And this is not um, about only Syria. I also talked to our um, dear friend, Anja Wirt, about this idea. Um, about the idea if he was welcome to go back to Poland at a certain moment. Um, it was really, it was really important for me to understand this mechanism when people really leave, if they are wanted back. Uh, um, there is the, um, the feeling that for those who, for those Syrians who are outside, there is this feeling that they are waited and like they, there is a moment when they maybe go back. But the fact is that no. People who are inside, they manage life in a different, in a way that, um, I mean, even resources wouldn't suffice if people come back. And the country lives from the, I mean, the, the, the families now live from the transfers. So it's a kind of an economic um, cycle now that of course the regime is benefiting from, but there's no end to it. So home for those people who left is no longer home. And home for those who were taken in like, ISIS or fighters or whatever is also very problematic. And I don't know how some politician really talk about identity and home as something very solid and Christian or Muslim or, yeah. So this idea of home that, uh, that really um, was important for me. I heard a lot of from people that after Corona, um, I mean, German people or let's say international people who are living in Berlin because that's the, the place I'm, I know now at the moment. I don't know other cities, but they, they look proudly at the, the way the, the German authorities dealt with, uh, with Corona. And in, in a way, they really felt rooted. Mm -hmm. They felt to be in the right place with all their complications and like... Uh, ideas or remarks, but in a way they felt rooted and they felt that other places failed their people. So in a way, the idea of safety now will redefine the meaning of home in a way for so many people is um, to, to define danger and safe. And um, that means to define maybe the word home. For Syrian, it was um, a problematic uh, issue because home meant meant danger. If I go home, I'm in danger, definitely. <laughs> Whether physically by bombs and death 
or the, I mean, um, with all the layers of detain, detention, uh, war death. But at the same time, um, home should really have a different uh, meaning for me. So it looks like um, living with um, an abusing family, living with an abusing father or mother, it's, it's a kind of um, problematic relation where you always go back to, to question and to um, understand more. And um, so yeah, with Corona, I guess it will define the relation of people, um, the, the relation, people's relation to the to ideas of home. And um, yeah, there is something that uh, also I wanted to tell you about is um, with all these um, ideas about refugees and, and here, I, I came here with a visa, so I'm not arriving here as a refugee. But um, I was so obsessed and, and I mean, working, all my work is in a way uh, political. I would just put it in two brackets because poetry is not, but I mean, the theater and, um, and documentaries are, politi uh, are political. So um, it was very astonishing for me that the, the, the new bearings of refuge bearings or whatever, they don't really prefer Afghan people to come to Germany at the moment. Like Syrian are okay, Afghan, they should really be deported quickly because Afghanistan is no longer on the top of the list of um, danger countries or like the countries at war. And um, at the same time, German citizens are not recommended to travel because it's not safe for them. So for me, safety and danger is like a very um, national. So um, it's a luxury. I mean, you're born with it. <laughs> mm. um, it's really uh, for me, I mean, now with this Corona thing, I guess if we don't really question again all these um, issues before we vote, it's really, I mean, we're going in a, in a slide <laughs> with mm. like one way to get down. If we don't really um, understand it, that there is a relation between our actions as artists, as human beings, not just what we say, but also what we do. Um, and I was thinking maybe the, the American election should be opened globally. I mean, because it affects everybody. I mean, maybe there should be an online election like to have some votes for international people too. <laughs> mm. Because it affects us. I mean, it's really, it, 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 it's not such a, it's not a American business. It's, uh, it changes mm. a lot in everybody's life. So maybe there should be, um, an idea that they give us, uh, like international people, they give us some slots in the, <laughs> yeah, sure. in, the, yeah. in, the in the elections in the yeah. And I was sure that he would be elected in, in back into in 2015. I was pretty sure. I was in New York and I was, um, I was attending all the rallies that he was doing, Trump. And I thought uh, at that moment, if this person makes it for the first round, he will be the one. And I remember maybe at that time, I also communicated with you and I in a way, maybe, I don't know if you remember, I told you, I feel that he will, mm -hmm. they will be there for so many reasons because people wanted something different from the, maybe the system, but at the same time, if, they were, if he was able to convince thousand people, he would be able to convince the others because then there is an appetite for that. And, um, and coming from an area where you smell um, the authoritarian or, like, or you smell these things, you know that, um, I mean, you see it. I mean, it's. Um, I was seeing it coming, and um, I hope this time not. This time not. Now it's true. I think um, America doesn't have an experience of an authoritarian leader. That's mm. perhaps also why the Democratic Party he doesn't really know how to act and not. And everybody tries mm. to be civil and write articles and uh, have rational arguments, um, but it is not. Not what uh, what's working. It's I'm so sorry. You know, I see all the the complications you 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 do experience. I even remember when you said when your father died, how complicated in your own country even it was. You know, to get a, a funeral done, and um, and how to uh, how can you call a place then home if it's not not safe? And Germany, yes, has done extraordinary well, uh, um, and uh, also took in I think over a million refugees or a million point five from Syria. America took two thousand or. 4,000 in a year, um, even so. Slovakia, they took maybe one. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Something it's, like that. <laughs> and even so, they had a big responsibility about politics in the region and a complete uh, yeah. neglect of uh, what a global leader um, should be. Yeah, should be um, should be doing um, for your work as an artist. Um, uh, is it a confirmation about the way you worked, you thought, or do you think coming out of this, you know, as we say, you know, nothing lasts forever. Not the good things, not the bad things. This will be over one day when they hopefully find that vaccine, and hopefully it's soon. But what will it be different? Will your work be different? It should be. At the moment, I don't know how in, in a way, but it should be. I mean, it's um, otherwise I would be moving in a bubble. I mean, it just, um, it should be different. Um, it's, I, I hope that um, it would be different for the better, of course, but it should be uh, when the, I will go back to war because I'm always trying to, to um, to talk about, to think about the values. I mean, it's what is more shocking for me, the war or this? I mean, it's- um, What is more uh, shocking? What is it? What, you, the Syrian civil war or Corona? What do you think? The, the Syrian civil war, I guess. Yeah, I, I don't have answers. I mean, is it close? Uh... <laughs> uh, it is, it is, um, it's more shocking. It's the Syrian, um, the Syrian civil war. Actually, I would start saying it was a revolution and then it, it turned to be a war, but it is more shocking because it also, um, sh it also sh um, in a way um, redefined the relation of some people that are very close to me who were, for example, pro regime or had such ideas. It was also shocking on the personal level, not all, not, not not only the horror of the of the war it's also the i mean the the inside horror of um, having somebody close who can kill and uh, or somebody close who who don't mind that other people die or to mm. see the destroyed to be surrounded by destruction to i mean to see how you normalize with it um i'm fascinated by how we quickly normalize how we immediately find a way to, I mean, to deconstruct things as if nothing is happening. And this mm -hmm. is an area where I'm really very interested in working. And that's how I, that's the, the main thing about goats that the play is that how we, no matter how surreal things are, I mean, we just really rearrange things that we accepted and as if it's been there forever. And um, I know it's a survival mechanism, but it's still very, very interesting for me how how we cope and how we accept and how we normalize. And um, so, yeah, for me, in Syrian was uh, the Syrian um, experience was more shocking, and it took me time to talk about it, to produce about about it, and um, and then I noticed what kind of effect it had on me, and I guess now. With the corona, it's um, it will also take some time for me to understand uh, what kind of questions and layers it added to to my work. I can now, from um, from um, an outside point of view, look at uh, how other um, plays or performances are now being conditioned and limited by the idea of social distance and. You can you can hear from your friends that the, the rehearsals were so intimate and like they were like touching and talking and whatever. But then the performance was <laughs> respecting the social distance and like so even in the mentality of directing, of writing, and of um, there is something is going to be. I mean, from the form, there is already this um, step of thinking about intimacy in a, in a different way. And um, this layer would be added. I mean, there would be people who are still afraid to shake hands, even if Corona stops, who knows what's coming next. So there is this, um, this question that is now posed and everyone is reacting to it. In, um, and you have to respect those who are still afraid, who don't want to, I mean, you look at the Bernina Ensemble, you see how they distributed I mean, the, the chairs. So 
again, theater is no longer an intimate moment. Um, so they have 20%, they opened again, but 20% yeah. uh, occupancy, like the, one row is empty and then yeah. five seats are empty and next person, because it's state subsidized, they can afford it, of course. Yeah. But, uh, how is it going? Do people go? Have you seen a play? Did you go not to see yet. a play? Not yet, not yet. Are you interested? Of course. I mean, also then again, Frank, the question of online, everybody is thinking that uh, we should also think of how to transmit this into as an, an online material. Is it fit to be an online material? So again, there is something about thinking about theater is definitely re reconstructing, reshaping in, in a way. And as I told you at the beginning, I, I'm sure we were going there before the corona mm -hmm. but corona it just they, they took this little pebbles and <laughs> yeah. things are faster. the velocity of it in, in <laughs> yeah. the video's idea of it it's just <laughs> incredible do you see something in syria or lebanon online um, yeah things where you say this is an interesting idea that's a form that could work can you is there something i'm still I'm still thinking, I mean, working with images for like in a documentary, I'm always, um, my relation to, to online is, um, I mean, is um, vivid, is not, um, is not rigid, my relation to this. And there was a moment when I felt, oh my God, now the universe, I mean, now the cultural scene around me is, work, is walking on my own pace. Great, nothing is happening outside. I have all the time to watch what I've missed. <laughs> so. That's good. Now everything is uh, working on my slow pace. I don't have to run. Everything is slowing down. I can really enjoy like a universal slow motion <laughs> movement. And, um, and all these ideas, which luckily I'm not having so much like the FUMO, the fear of missing out, the, because this was now classified as a, as a real phobia, mm -hmm. like in, in, in psychiatry. Yeah. Again, with the influx of things available online, and you cannot really get grasp of all of them, again, recreated this need, oh, what should I, again, you have this, I mean, that's how I say the system reshapes itself. Again, you, there are so many things that you'd like to see, but that you're missing out because they are there for like one day, one night, whatever, for example, Theater Treffen, the theater festival in Berlin, the, um, the, the important place they were there really for a very, very, very short time and like with limited spaces, which is, I mean, also a good idea, a good convention maybe for the theater. But again, I've heard it a lot from friends around me that they are hectic trying to, uh, to catch up with this online um, um, I mean, kind of um, invasion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so everything at a, at the a moment, everything is there for you um, I wouldn't say it's designed to be online, but now the idea of designing things to be available online is present, is very present. And from, from film festivals, it's very clear that um, I attended so many um, seminars where there's even like big festivals, they cannot really withdraw now this possibility from the festival. So even if physical festivals are inevitable, they will happen in a way, but still the, um, this one step forward would never go back completely mm -hmm. back. I mean, things sh will be in a way, should be in a way, will be online. People will, um, since they tasted the idea of it's possible, so it will not go back. And this applies of course to theater and this definitely will have things to, um, to affect the way we write and the way people produce and how theaters um, depend financially on tickets or on subscriptions on, on such things. But um, yeah, it is happening. The online thing is happening and um, it's enjoyable. It's, um, of course, it, it uh, diminishes a lot of the, the meaning of the genre, of a genre like theater. It is more accessible for people in other countries who don't have the chance to see um, uh, Amilo Rao, uh, let's say. Mm -hmm. or, uh, but um, it is coming, it is there, and um, we have to accept it and to see what tools do we have to deal with it. Do we, 
I mean, fighting against it is um, is um, absurd, I guess. Hmm. Is there something you saw, like a production? This was great. Um, yes, I saw one, but I cannot talk about it because it was a secret. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was a secret thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, Maybe talk in secret terms about mysterious <laughs> terms. <laughs> Yeah, I um, yes, I saw um, yes, I saw some productions from from the region, from Syria, from Lebanon, and I liked them. And um, uh, I was fascinated that these things are happening um, with the little resources people have there, and to understand how people um, struggle to make sense and make meaning, and to talk about values in. Um, in um, in a demand for a, in a demand of, for tri triviality, I mean there is like um, a, a global and there are of course is, um, local um, intentional support for triviality and for ridiculousness and to find someone who's trying to make a value and to question this value is very in war destroyed uh, places and in economic problems, it's still very um, touching. Mm. So there are, I guess, underground performances, secret yeah, yeah. places, you are invited by a password shortly before, yeah. so it can't be censored. And so it's a form of an underground um, subversive art, yeah. um, as it has been, you know, for, for centuries in authoritarian regimes or in war times where you put your life at risk. Uh, um, when you uh, uh, utter sentences or create images that are uh, not conform, they are labeled as degenerated, whatever. But also now you put your life at risk with COVID, you know, as an actor with your company, but also perhaps as a performer, you might come and as a as a as a as a spectator. You come, you put your life. You could get the, the virus, or as a performer, you could get it from the audience. It's an Artodian. Um, um, situation of a plague and signaling through flames and uh, and as someone said it is Artodian times but we have to stay on the right side of madness and not follow uh, the, the madness that is destructive it's from the dark side theater is on the side of life coming slower uh, closely closely to the end um, what do you what do you read what inspires you what how do you keep your motor running how do you sharpen your knives um, I watch a lot, a lot of what is available online, actually, uh, when Film it's possible. Film or TV or Films, theater? No, not TV. Films and theater. And um, I take time to think, think a lot, actually think and um, um, and also imagine things without. Um, yeah, with some um, like staying out in a way it's not, not very recommended but i mean thinking of the relation of the outside how um maybe we um we abuse the relation in a way uh, with things i mean with the materials around us and like there uh, there is um there is a moment to understand the value of everything of like being out and um traveling and all these things. So it's for me, it was um, a very um, good moment to think and think again, think again and um, watch and read and think about um, black comedy, <laughs> think about grotesque again, think about the absurd because um, I guess it's, um, it's there are a lot of uh, elements of the absurd in this moment of the tragic, but still the, also, um, I guess maybe I was thinking, is it the right way to talk about it? In um, I mean, is um, like the grotesque, you know? I was like thinking about um, also the um, this crisis, this political crisis between. I mean, it's the, everyone is talking about the political crisis of the left, and there's also the political political crisis of the of the of the right. And um, so, I mean, this is um, this is really problematic because uh, there should be now then um, 
the North maybe, I don't know, but uh, there should be something new out of this. And, um, yeah. and um, for me, everything that is too uh, absurd and too tragic and problematic, I, I try to look for what is really the absurd and what is the surreal and then what is the maybe the black comedy about it. it's not a comedy it's just like mm -hmm. what is the grotesque about it because it, I feel this is the way to to understand it more and to face it as a human being not only as a um, as a tragedy is but also when you see it historically you see your place historically in this I mean it's very tiny and it will repeat itself it happened before and it will happen again and repetition is again that thing that uh, breeds um, um, laugh not laughter but breeds your distance and it breeds your interaction with it and I was thinking where this would be in in, in relation to corona or these times that we're living in yeah. I, I do have it as a question. I don't know yeah. actually the answers, but yeah. And um, I'm watching a lot. I'm attending the Seagull talks and um, yeah, no place, no place much for TV. <laughs> mm. Although I'm working on like a mini series for the Arab world, but um, yeah, it's um, it's more about if you answer your own questions, I guess you manage maybe more to be more in, um, more talking to the others. So the more you talk to yourself, the more you have questions, the more you have doubts and uh, you doubt your own tools, you, you doubt um, about the narratives. It's, it's a war about narratives after all. Everything, I mean, it's, this is really now we're very well known. We're just fighting over narratives. So. The more you question the narratives you are in, I mean, the more that maybe you could be useful and um, uh, talking to others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. We are still flying by night. We don't know where it's going. We have to talk to others, listen. I like your question. Um, this is a big question. Is theater, will it be the kind of the theater of the real, the idea of a Carol Martin's idea of the documentary? way as you do document it or will it be in this theater of the grotesque the absurd because life is now stranger than fiction life doesn't make mm -hmm. sense it's absurd and grotesque what's happening so pretending that anything has a logical sense on stage doesn't make any sense because it doesn't reflect the work of mm -hmm. this was how it is in eastern europe the comedies of mrozek or unesco or so many others because they said this is real it's much more yeah. a reflection of reality than anything that would be quote unquote real or could be um, a story on a, on a, on a film. Um, uh, as maybe as a closing question, what, what advice do you have for young artists, and also for our listeners, but let, like the young Liva, you know, who uh, started out in theater and in writing and film, you know, um, what, what, what do you say to artists and what do you say to our listeners? How should we use this time best and what should artists do? Maybe they should tell me. <laughs> Maybe they have better answers than, than the ones I have. Uh, of course, I'm not in the position to tell anybody. This is, of course, but um, I just talked to my, about myself. It's, um, I mean, get informed. Um, it's not about production. It's not about how much we produce. It's about what we produce, what stays. It's not important that you produce a superficial, quickly, a good, um, I mean, uh, film or theater that dies immediately when the thing, I mean, when the, the, phase, the, phase, the, the phase goes away, but it's important to think and deeper and deeper and deeper. It's um, art gives us the chance to, I mean, to create even the, um, the speech of the, um, of the other if you're a writer or whatever. So you can, you can create the, the narrative of the other and that is a moment to understand maybe and to get informed more not to have judgments quickly and to yeah it's it's a moment to life is so complicated to have of course to um so the more you know about it the more you get informed the more you take your distance and not um worry about what you're producing at the moment is very important 
um, I would say this is maybe something that I also should advise myself, not only others, is um, to think in terms of community, not only in terms of like an individual. If you cannot go to theater, maybe, I mean, the, in, in your own little community, it's um, there is, I mean, a, a moment where you can think of um, on, a, on a smaller scale and um, artists, they, they can uh, now with the social media, they can have more uh, channels to talk to each other. Maybe this is, this would be helpful in, in, in sharing their um, ideas. And um, I'm not doing this, but I always thought that this is a good idea. And when, when there is um, a blanket of problems covering everyone, I mean, why not to talk to each other as well? Um, but yeah, get informed and just like to know more and um, not worry about producing at this moment. I mean, they will come and the more you take in, the better you would give later on. So yeah. Mm. Well, that's uh, that's that is very good advice. You know, stay informed. You know, um, think about community, and uh, and uh, and and find a way to participate. So that is um, um, a more real significance. So, Liu, I really, really thank you. And uh, thank you, Frank. And one can only imagine. You know, what does it really mean? We hear you. You know, and then you go move on to something. Well, what does it really mean? And you're not in your country. You're had to leave trying to make it with voice theater and, and writing in another country where you have to speak other languages there. Yeah. And, uh, and, and the loss, you know, that cannot be replaced. And what's lost already is also lost. You will not, it doesn't even exist anymore when you wanted to go back. And, um, and what uh, will the, the future bring all these uncertainties? And, um, and we have to all reimagine ourselves. It's really hard work and you've been thrown into it by life. You didn't ask for it and you have to deal with it, but you're dealing in it with the most beautiful way in creating art and participating in community sharing and, uh, and perhaps through your experience and work and also create meaning for others who see what you do and they recognize something it resonates and uh, perhaps makes them feel a bit more at home for that moment and gives an understanding and we get uh, more, um, more accustomed to that new world we live in. And this is also what art does, that artists anticipate a future and perhaps help us to stay uh, in the moment and to say, it's okay, it will be different. There will be Zoom, there will be digital world, others, um, but um, there are That's ways- That word is a new, new. And, yeah. and that word is <laughs> But listen, thank you. I hope you will have a good dinner um, um, in, in Berlin. Say hi to Mohammed and your, and your, and your you. girl. He and, said hi uh, too. <laughs> good. And, um, and really, thank you for uh, joining you us. For As we me. said, it's serious, serious time. 2.5 million infections here in the US. Uh, but Times article said really it sorry. Ten, it's 10 times higher. Most probably the number is 25 million at the moment. Oh. Um, um, the real number, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's quite, uh, it's stunning. And as you say, grotesque, absurd what's happening. And I hope the people, it's just done for the people, by the people, with the people that something will change and make this better. And the Siegel talk, we will continue on week 14 and next week. So they're coming to an end for this week. And we have on Monday two New Yorker artists, great artists, uh, organizers, curators, Kami, uh, Ilse Nanmi from New York and Ebony Noel Golden from New York City. They will be both together here from the Laundromat Project and her as an, an artist, performer and choreographer. And we have news from Kosovo where the National Theater has been destroyed a couple of weeks ago because of interest of uh, redevelopment and, and others. Uh, Chetan Netirai from Kosovo who came to La Mama not long time ago with LGBT play, which was the very first one in Kosovo that she presented and they walked around, they went around in small places, small towns, very dangerous thing, what he did, a fantastic work, how, how he put it together. And he will be joined by uh, Gianina Kabunarari. She also came to us uh, from, from uh, uh, Romania who will also talk a bit about her, her situation there on Wednesday, we hear from France, um, from Frédéric Ait uh, Tuati. Uh, she collaborates with Bruno Latour and uh, many projects. She was at NYU uh, for that lecture performance and are working with the Berlin Festspiele with Thomas Oberander on a project where they think about the environment and the idea is to have an exhibition about the environment but without air conditioning and without using electricity because if we have to change also what we do institutions have to change. How do you 
really do that even in the next season. It's a fantastic project of ideas about Brecht and uh, or ideas about the encounter and the continuous of thinking. I think is of importance to us. We will hear from uh, the Ashtar Theater in Palestine. Uh, Iman Aoun will tell us what it means to be making theater right now in Palestine, um, already on complex, complicated conditions, politically, socially, economically, artistically. And on top of it, now we have that virus. And then we hear from uh, Jamaica, the Caribbean again, uh, um, the English speaking Caribbeans this time, and the Sakina Dia and Ivone Walters will tell us um, how uh, the situation is for theater artists in Jamaica and um, what they think about or what the consequences are of this virus and in general, how it is to make art um, on the islands. And uh, so again, Levi's, thank you. It was really important for us to hear from you. It was thank you. really important to share. And I think for our listeners, we'll have better questions. We'll know a little bit more about that big, big world. We live in any experience as singular and individual, but all together, it creates something. We are all connected. We do care for each other. So we care about you and your work and, uh, and uh, the sorrows of life. Uh, hopefully, as theater should be, it's a joyful participation in the yeah. sorrows of life. Um, but uh, uh, it is important and important for us to have listeners and uh, to who are there. And also there might be something in there for your own life that is of meaning, helps you to change, to become a better person. It helped me so much. I learned so much from all the talks and um, and I think we have to change authentically ourselves. That is what we're hearing from all our artists. We have to also change and take it serious and change then the world uh, we go into. Thanks to HowlRound freely out of Emerson College for hosting us, Thea and, and the VJ. It's sensational to be with us now for 14 weeks next week. I don't think they really knew we would do it so long. And uh, now <laughs> Thea has to get up in Los Angeles every morning before nine o'clock uh, and uh, she doesn't show it at all. It's an unholy time, but it means a lot to us and our listeners. And of course, to the Siegel team, uh, San Yang and Andy and, and everybody. And again, uh, say hi to Berlin. And it's great to hear that things we are miss going you. well. <laughs> and yes, and, uh, and what a great city it is at the moment. And you are right, American artists uh, are going now to Berlin. It used to be Paris, it used to be New York, perhaps. And now it is uh, Berlin's time still um, mm -hmm. as a center, you know, of uh, something that is working where there's an atmosphere. And art is about atmosphere that's being created and then reflected in the work. So, um, well, our listeners, see you next week. I really, really hope you can join us and stay with us. And uh, bye bye, Liva. Bye bye. So, you, all of you uh, uh, stay safe and uh, stay tuned. And um, see you, as we now say, see you Zoom. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>